Overall 1 story 1 animation 1 sound 1 character 10 enjoyment 2 I love penis, girl, age 12 Aramanga Sensei is a harrowing tale of love, lust and youthful ignorance. Despite not being overly fond of the word, deconstruction, it might be the only way to describe the show from a critical standpoint. This review will go in-depth on each individual character and story arc, and thus no words will be minced. If you are under 18 and or faint of heart, please seek guidance of a guardian when reading this analysis. Viewer discretion is highly advised. Society might condemn it, but the gene pool won't. An odyssey story, characters perhaps the element the Aramanga community would vouch to be the strongest would be its relentless story. Despite being genre-defiant, it has a clear narrative that it follows through from beginning to end without catering to any unnecessary tropes nor ending up as preachy, convoluted, hipster bait, so far up their own ass shows in the same vein such as the likes of Neon Genesis Evangelion. Coming equipped with powerful and bone-chilling, bona fide theme exploration, it chooses not to hold your hand, but to make you think critically by painting a well-defined picture of moral grayness. Several anime have extensively tried developing upon this theme in the past, and several anime have failed miserably. But to that I say, no more. Perhaps drawing closest inspiration from the likes of Koike's, an anime heavily reliant on fanservice and otaku pandering to keep itself a plot with very little legitimate theme exploration of the traditional Japanese family bonding. My heart has sunk deep into my chest for merely making the comparison between the two, but it is worth noting that Aramanga capitalizes off of Koike's strongest themes and maximizes the end result by tenfold. Despite some respectable attempts, by the start of Koike's I was like, this is boring. And by the end of Koike's, it was dropped. But if it wasn't dropped, I'd still be like, this is boring. The consistency gap between them is apparent as night and day, but I digress. Backpedaling to the theme of grey morality, it is utilized superbly in a multitude of ways. Despite the Japanese being so openly passionate about family bonding and the like, you'd think it to be a glorified tradition buried in their country's lineage for generations to both go and come. But it's not, at least I don't think it is. Even if it were, it is certainly not viewed upon in the same light as it is in Western societies, making it a more taboo topic for some, and IT's current mean score is a clear indication of how a select few people from our community would rather indulge in meandering drivel than intellectual discussion regarding serious topics. They shun it for what it is, not what it hopes to accomplish. Japan's declining birth rate has been a well-known and low-key touchy subject, especially for the citizens themselves. No one is eager to be brought out of extinction due to a national epidemic of personalized sex robots, incapable of producing offspring. The youth of Japan is rapidly dying and infertile 3D waifus have enslaved the brave men who once fought and gave their lives for their country, thus having society collapsing in on itself. How do you ever handle such a vile outbreak? Tsukasa Fushimi is not only a light novel author, but also a visionary. Make them fuck their sisters, of course. Regarding the actual show, it follows a very straight-edge protagonist during the period of his life he would later come to look back upon as blissful ignorance. Masamun was just a boy when he saw his mother being brutally murdered by his father, John, in a drunken rage, until pleading innocent in front of a jury. Despite the 23 stab wounds, it was decided upon that they were self-inflicted as she had been dealing with substance abuse for many years now. Oddly enough, life simply went on for Masamun. He figured he was supposed to be sad or guilt-struck, but he simply continued with his daily routine as if nothing had happened. Is human life so meaningless after all, he quietly pondered to himself during the hours his father was out drinking. He would occasionally bring women home with him, but Masa Mun, although slightly annoyed eventually became numb to it, despite being able to hear a relentless sound of a bed squeaking from his father's room during the late hours of the night. This behavior stopped only after John had suffered an implied stroke. Fast forward a few years, Masamun has developed a psychological interior shell seemingly impossible to penetrate through by anyone coming from the outside, leading to him becoming a social outcast. Despite his father having simmered down and becoming completely inattentive and barely responsive due to health problems, the doorbell rang. It was another woman. Masamun was struck by surprise and a slight chill went through his spine as all the memories came rushing back. This time was different, however. Behind the woman was none other than a young girl, no more over the age of 10. If he could describe his life as a picture frame, she just wouldn't fit, he quietly muttered to himself. The innocence of a snowflake, something so alien to him made him naturally uneasy. It was kind of frightening, actually. That was the day they met, a blissful encounter in a world with otherwise no empathy for the weak. 
because all happiness must come to an end, this relationship had seemed to have come to an unexpected close with the sudden passing away of their parents came to fruition. Masamune couldn't deny it, he wanted his father out of the picture for a long time now. He felt nothing but disgust for him due to living in constant anguish and fear for many years now. He thought he didn't care what happened to him, as long as his father was gone. But now that his wish has come to pass, he was left feeling perplexed. How is he supposed to take care of his sister now? How is he to preserve the soul, flickering